Hey guys, welcome back to another video. I uh, just wanted to do a quick video, a uh, little how-to um, that kind of addresses one of probably the most most asked or frequently asked questions that I <laughs> get um, emails about uh, or comments. And it has to do with the, the early stages of building the car when I created the uh, sections uh, and had it in the wood stage basically so I did a video a while back I'm not really sure which video is like 52 or 6 or somewhere in that range and I'll, what I'll do is I'll put a link to it but basically what I did was I uh, took a CAD file you know the creation that I did in CAD and I sliced the car up into several slices basically uh, I don't know about a hundred and uh, 30 slices in one direction and another 60 that way or 30 or whatever anyway I ended up with about 200 plus uh, sections of the car and then I laid out those sections on a level platform and filled the sections with uh, in between each section with foam and then uh, carved that foam down to meet the profile of each one of those sections which gave me the shape of the car in a uh, Pretty much a solid format. So, uh, so the so the question is, is how do I keep symmetry going through that whole process of creating each one of those uh, sections or forms? And it's pretty simple, actually. I mean, it depends on which method you're going to to use to to, to do everything. Uh, uh, a lot of people will will say go to a CNC, you know, and go that route but it just kind of depends on your your budget because that's expensive or can be if uh if you pay someone to do that and you may need to do like a first a few uh, experimental uh, pieces or sections first to see if you're going in the right direction or you like what you're doing you know etc so so say you only wanted to do the first front of the car to see if the front end was really looking the way that you wanted before you continued and to spend more money on wood and uh, CNC or go that route or, or whatever so this method allows you to do it pretty much completely manual using uh, some quarter inch MDF wood and uh, a jigsaw so pretty simple tools just need those two things uh, some screws and you know a drill maybe uh, that's about it and let me show you kind of what I'm talking about uh, all right so what I have here is uh, a piece of the uh, the car in its sliced format so in the earlier video where I have the car in CAD and I slice up the the car and all these sectioned pieces I ended up with a piece that looks like this and uh, this is a uh, outline so we have the the outline of the car's profile right here as we're following the, the pencil so that's the outside profile and if you look at that, that matches the edge here. So there's like a line that I just drew, but uh, so that side profile matches this, and then it goes down, and then you got the snorkel scoop uh, all the way to the center line of the car. And that's what you have here. So you have uh, the the outside fender, and then it goes down a little bit, and then we start with the, the part of the opening of the snorkel. All right, so that gives you an idea of what I'm talking about as a section of the car so you have part of the profile and the more of these that you make the higher the resolution of your your body buck is going to be so the better it's going to be so the more you know if you just about make it solid wood it would be really really accurate even doing it the jigsaw method uh, as I like to say so um, and another thing is like uh, something you'll, you'll see here is that I only have half of this uh, form piece okay and that's all that you need now if you had a really large CNC machine or something and you wanted to cut out both sides all at once then you would have a perfectly symmetrical piece on a bigger piece of wood if the machine can handle it but a lot of the CNC routers uh, is what most people would use to do this don't really support uh, something that's you know 80 inches wide or 70 inches wide or so and uh, you're kind of limited to the size so this kind of breaks it down to basically a four foot by four foot uh, if that you know um, 
it's really a little less than that, but that kind of gives you an idea. So if the machine can handle you know four feet by four feet, then then uh, you're in good shape. So if not, then you're kind of stuck with the jiggy jigsaw method. <laughs> so all right, uh, yeah. So this is that uh, form piece, and I have another one here to kind of give you an idea, which is more close. This is closer to the front of the car, and so you have a little bit of the cutouts at the front grill area and a little bit of the headlight. And uh, and of course, if you're going to, again, do this through a machine or CNC, you're going to have to finish off all these lines, and you have to edit these files and give it in to the people in a format that the machine can read. So this is for doing it the uh, good old manual jigsaw way. And something you'll notice is that I have all these markers, and I explain this in a video too, but the purpose of these is they are to help you guide and line everything up as you're building the form and you know down the length of the car. So each one of these is spaced out exactly an inch apart and if you can you want to uh, maybe print this out on a large size piece of paper, line it up onto a big 4x4 four four piece of wood and just use some spray uh, glue and uh, place this down real gently without you know stretching it or putting wrinkles in it and then uh, then it becomes your reference piece uh, for cutting out uh, the shape and if you're gonna do it on a CNC then you don't have to worry about the piece of paper but make sure that you have the guys with the the CNC router to put in the marker pieces because those do come in very handy later on uh, especially if you need to make some adjustments or modifications or maybe someone bumps the form and it gets off you know center or something like that then you have a bunch of reference points to to mark uh, or to align everything up with um, and if you, another thing if you notice here is I have part of the the chassis frame so this is where the suspension perch is and this is just kind of a generic uh, representation of the chassis what I did is I actually built this this form and each one of the sections to sit on the chassis and to be part of the chassis so that I could actually put suspension on it and be able to uh, put on wheels and tires and put in the seats as you can see and you know the chassis is still there uh, and allows me to really make sure that what I what I'm doing and is correct and everything's lining up so that's real important uh, alright so the the real tricky not really tricky part but the the part that <laughs> a lot of people probably end up kicking themselves for because it's really simple is that if you notice here I have only half of this design or half of this uh, uh, section piece and behind this I have another piece of paper alright so there's a second piece of paper and what happens is that second piece of paper represents the second piece of 4x4 four four piece of wood so what I do is I would uh, align the very center edge so this is the center edge right here and this is the base down here and I would make sure that these edges were perfect uh, aligned and then I would screw the sh pieces together in various places like that alright that way the piece of wood wouldn't shift and then I'd come in and cut around the, uh, the profile and do that and then when I undid the screw pieces I would have a mirrored version that was uh, exactly symmetrical to the first piece because it was cut at exactly the same time uh, the same way and all you have to do is just flip it over you butt it up to the center edge and then you basically uh, put a brace in between each piece to hold it together and that allows you to uh, take it apart if you need to pretty easily and transport it uh, to make changes uh, to you know easily assemble it uh, etc and also gives you a solid center line down the car because you'll have a little seam where everything lines up and that will give you a nice base line base center line to reference all your your points off of later uh, so that's pretty much it I mean that's really how simple it is and you just do that with every single piece and uh, and and that's it so that keeps everything perfectly symmetrical and to kind of give you an idea I'll actually cut this out and and show you how it, how it comes out so uh, so there you go I hope that helps 
and and all that and you guys understand how that works and, and everything and like I said if you're going to do the CNC machine way then you don't have to worry about it so much unless the machine can't handle the large format pieces of wood uh, now you will have to get this like printed on larger pieces of paper or set your your normal printer to a one-to-one -one scale and try to line up all your pieces of paper using little marker pieces uh, that's that's allows for a lot more error <laughs> so it's better to spend a little money to go and have this printed out on large like plotter you know uh, paper at a local you know print shop or something like that and that way you have everything is, is just fine and the the thicker the paper the better that way when you go to glue it down it's less likely to get wrinkles or to stretch out or whatever um, when, you know from the glue it's less you know likely to have a reaction to that and it won't shift as much so I would get it printed out on almost like a cardboard stock type paper uh, so that you have that to, to work with on top of your pieces of plywood so uh, so anyway so I hope that helps out I'll cut this out and then you can see what it looks like and uh, I'll show you that in a sec one sec Okay, so now I've cut everything out as you can see here and what I did is I put staples so I got a stapler and just stapled everything in uh, and so now we can just pop that out and I have the little section here and what I'll do is undo the staples so in essence this would be like the screws uh, on the piece of wood so kind of just did this kind of rough so <laughs> it uh it's not really going to be perfect on the line and i can't get that tickle i don't cut myself okay so the staple went crazy all right and All right. Now, one thing you notice um, that I did with this is I actually cut because I uh, allowed for the chassis and everything. Made sure to allow for the tires and wheels. So that's why it has this shape. This is where the wheel goes and sits, and this is where that suspension uh, perch was. And it's probably a good idea if you're going to do it with the chassis in a car to go ahead and basically just cut around where your chassis piece would be and that way this whole piece would fit in matter of fact i'd probably just go ahead and cut down like that that way this will sit on the base and then your chassis will be able, so be able to fit in and you'll have some room uh, to uh, place it around and center everything so that's it and then now you just take your two pieces all right you just turn this one over and what you'll do is you'll uh, essentially stick them together like that and now you have a symmetrical profile of both sides of the car that can be easily done using a jigsaw or uh, just any kind of saw really um, and if you did this on a CNC and you had a smaller uh, CNC router then you would do it the same way and you would have two pieces just even on a CNC you just cut both at the same time that way it, you don't have to make so many runs on the CNC uh, and that's it so then you just um, come in and I don't know if this is going to work but say <laughs> so then you would just fasten them together so use your imagination <laughs> uh, if you get the idea 
but you would basically just this would say maybe a piece of wood and you just glue it all together or uh, something like that so that's kind of crude but um, you get the idea so there you go so hopefully, hopefully that answers a uh, ton of questions on this because it is probably the the number one thing that I get asked on the symmetry of the whole project so just keep in mind uh, to kind of pre-plan your your outlines or your 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 sections and you know so think about your chassis or whatever you want to put in place for test fitting certain pieces and also you know make sure that you use as many pieces of wood that you can because the more pieces that you uh, use the better the profile will be and the more accurate it will be to your model and you won't have a bunch of flat areas where the uh, foam was so that's something I learned on basically blade 1.0 where I had you know as much as eight inches of spacing between them and I went all the way down to two inches and even an inch uh, of spacing between each piece and that way just made it much easier much more accurate uh, faster to shape out and everything so and also a lot stronger uh, piece too to work with so anyway there you go I uh, hope you guys like this info um, make sure you you know like subscribe and uh, feel free to ask any other questions and I'll uh, try to get back to answering more stuff uh, see you guys later bye